and and you can see, and I see this so interesting too. The the legacy media uh, types are they're done. They're so done. It's and it's happened so fast. I notice among young people that the legacy media, the big magazines, the newspapers, the TV stations, the radio stations, for that matter, all of whom had a monopoly on this kind of information flow are so dead to people under 30 that it's as if their death isn't even noticed. And that's fascinating. And yesterday I, I interviewed Richard Tremblay and Richard Tremblay is, a, is in his eighties and he's a scientist who studied male aggression, a research scientist who studied male and female aggression for 40 years. And he's won the criminologists equivalent of the Nobel Prize and the Order of Canada, which is Canada's knighthood for all intents and purposes. Um, hundreds of publications, a very distinguished scientist. And we had a two hour conversation and I thought afterwards, I thought, you know, I've only been able to have conversations like that in graduate seminars, in the highest quality graduate seminars, in the most elite universities now and then even though I was placed to have those conversations, two hours on a single topic covered in as much depth as possible um, by, by someone who's a world authority. And now I can have that conversation with people and 150,000 to a million people can have access to it instantly. It's like, I think, <laughs> God only knows what that is going to be the consequence of that. So it's so fun to, to play around with this and to experiment with it. And, and it's such a privilege to be able to do it. And there's so much possibility in it. So, and I've also been trying to figure out what I'm doing with the podcasts themselves, because that's really what I've been doing a lot of for the last four months. And I listened to this. I was interviewed by a wall street journalist last week and I asked him what he liked about podcasts. Cause he listens to them a lot. And he said, I really like to see where they're going. And I thought, yeah, that's exactly it. Because in a legacy media interview, everything is scripted and you're never talking to a person. You're talking to the corporation, essentially. And I'm not being cynical about that. It, it had to be that way because bandwidth was so expensive. But now you can sit down with someone and you can risk exploration. Of course, that's what Joe Rogan has been doing so well for so many years. You can risk exploration. You can have two people having a genuine discussion about a complex issue and so they're they're engaging in dialectical thinking and if they're good at it they're modeling it so they can model high quality dialectical thinking and pull people along on an exploratory journey and make it permanent and that's completely revolutionary that's never been possible before and 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 the possibilities are um Limitless. And then, sorry, I'm going to rant about this a bit because I, I am so st continually staggered by this. The next thing is you can take those conversations and you can chop them up into 30 second pieces, a minute long pieces, five minute long pieces, 20 minute long pieces. And each of those can find a specialized home that can attract millions of views. And so it's as if you could write a book and sell it by the sentence. It's it's really something so. Well, so that's, you know, all response to Red Skull, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> the interesting thing that I think I enjoy about podcasts and a lot of audiences do as well is that unscripted nature. But it's not just the fact that the topics are unscripted. It's the the cadence and the, the timbre of the, the tone of the way that the conversation flows as well. If you struggle to work something out, if you're battling at the forefront of your own cognitive capacity to try and get yep. something from brain to mouth, we get to hear. I'm yep. brought along and we're, it's almost like a football match or a sports game. We're willing the person yep. to get to the goal. Absolutely. Yep. It is exactly like that. It's, a, it, 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 it's, it, it's, 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 you the analogy is directly appropriate. That's why people like football and soccer games. Look, those, the, the players are trying to put something into the goal. Well, that's what you're doing when you're having a genuine dialogue. You know, it isn't necessarily clear what the goal is. It's more implicit because you're, you're starting to make that more and more clear too. But, but, and, and there is something engaging about participating in that apparently as a listener, as well as a participant. And I can tell perfectly well when a podcast discussion is going well and it's a dance 
right? I mean, there's there, there has to be this continual reciprocity, and that requires you to attend very carefully to your guest and to listen. I have some trouble with not interrupting because for a variety of reasons, but some of that's the technological lag produced by the by Zoom and Skype. It, it makes you a little less, uh, what, the dance is a little more awkward because the timing is off, but it, it's it's really fun when it works, and it's working much of the time when I'm talking to my guests. It's really exciting. I have all sorts of people lined up. I'm so excited about it. Yeah, yeah. Long may it continue. I really do think that it's it's such an answer to so much bad media and bad thinking, and it gives a platform to people who can't hide behind media training anything. and scripting. You can't hide behind anything. No, there is no place to hide. I don't think. I think, no, there's no place to hide. I think that if... In two hours, you reveal your hand, and everyone can see it. You reveal the weaknesses and strengths of your argument. You reveal the weaknesses and strengths of your character. You know, but but in some sense, you can, even if your character is flawed, like all of our characters are, you know, if you're engaged in something genuine, in a, in a genuine move forward, you're forgiven for that, right? It, it, if, if you're at, if you're actively rectifying your evident flaws during the discussion, people will forgive you for your flaws. But YouTube and podcast long form seems absolutely unforgiving of any <laughs> falsity, as far as I can tell. I mean, sometimes we do some editing. Eh? There, there's two conditions under which we'll edit. One is just to edit out some technical glitch. We also allow our guests um, the option of not having something they said broadcast if they believe they've made a factual error or addressed an argument um, in a misleading way. And that's a li little bit more of a moral quagmire. But our thought is that if we allow people that veto power to begin with, they're much more likely to be loose and to take risks in the exploration. And we've had to cut virtually nothing except I think two factual errors of a few seconds, but it's so interesting because in the comments section, if we ever edit anything, there's skepticism right away. And so, and so that's another indication of how unforgiving the medium is with regards to falsity. I'm trying to get politicians on my podcast. Uh, senator Mike Lee, who's probably the most conservative Senator in the United States, the, um, uh, I'm releasing a podcast with him this weekend, and I think he acquitted himself well. Um, and I'm hoping that I'm I'm I've been in contact with a large number of Democrats, and I'm hoping that they'll take the big leap because they can talk directly to their constituents. They can talk directly to the people who they're responsible to, with no intermediation of bureaucracy, if they dare. That's hey, the, that's the thing because when it's unedited when it's a flowing conversation for a long amount of time, the precipice on either side, you are walking a tightrope, as you said. There is no yep. opportunity to go away and check what you actually want to say and rewrite it in a script. It is riding the crest of now, yep. constantly surfing the wave of the crest of now. Um, yep. I think it's going to find yes. out who... It's a genuineness test, like a canary in the coal mine for how genuine someone is. Because there's no way that you can hold up a persona for two hours straight. Yeah. Well, or 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 maybe somewhat more forgiving than that. It might be a canary test for how genuine they're they're attempting to move towards. Because, like I said, I think you can make mistakes, but 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 it, if if you're bargaining in good faith, the audience will forgive you for your for your mistakes. So, but, but you're punished brutally if you're false. So, and I don't know about you, but I'm really attentive to the comments. I watch how people are responding. And, you know, if 10 people point out something, I'm still working on this proclivity to interrupt. But if 10 people point out something, I try to address it. My team tries to address it because, well, why not? You know, I mean, you're probably doing something wrong at some point. If enough people tell you, it's tricky, but it's at least worth considering thank you very much for tuning in if you enjoyed that then press here for the full unedited episode and don't forget to subscribe it makes me very happy peace